A computer software is a set of instructions, data or programs used to operate a computer or perform a particular task in a system. But today we are going to look into something that is known as SDLC. SDLC refers to the development of a software for a system. Hi guys and welcome to yet another interesting video by Simply Learn. But before we begin, if you love watching tech videos, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to miss an update from us. Now without further ado, let's take a look at the agenda for this session. The first heading is, what is SDLC? To begin with, we will know some introductory knowledge about SDLC. Moving on with, why do we apply SDLC? Continuing with different phases involved in the development of a software. As for the last different models used to develop SDLC. Let's begin with the first heading that is SDLC. The software development life cycle or SDLC refers to the planned designing of software models that are systematically evaluated at each point by different protocols involved in the SDLC phases. The SDLC process is defined using multiple phases that involves different protocols to be acted upon the software development. For example, planning phase, defining, designing phase, building, testing, deploying and maintenance. These are some of the main phases that leads to the development of a software for the client. Moving on, let's take a look at why do we apply the SDLC cycle. The reason to apply the SDLC life cycle in the development of a software is because it provides a team with a developed life cycle format or a framework to build a software from scratch. It provides better control over each development phase of the software designing where the coding is to be done, what about the errors in the development, and different particular points or attributes that affect the functioning of a software. It also improves client interaction with the multiple development phases of the software. Now let's move on to the next heading that is different phases that involve the development of a software. The SDLC life cycle is divided into multiple steps to provide a better end product according to the client's request, which are planning and requirement analysis. At this step, the planning and the requirement of the software is discussed with the client. Moving on with defining the requirements, according to the planned scenario, we will define certain terms for development of the software. Containing with designing the software, coding or implementing the physical points of the software. Moving on to the testing phase where different scenarios are used to test the overall functioning of a software. As for the last step we have deployment and maintenance where the developed software is deployed and is assessed by the users to check for any errors or bugs. Moving on let's take a look at the individual phases of SDLC. The first phase is planning and requirement analysis. Planning is the most important step for the software development. The developer performs the requirement analysis for the software in the team. Moving on, the software development data is obtained from client service and information, which are used from consumers or sales team. The analysis data acts as a basis for planning the development route for the required software. Also, the analysis data is used to check for any risk as for quality assurance of the software being developed at different stages of SDLC. Moving on, we have the second stage that is defining requirements. With the completion of planning step, the next step is to present the software requirements and documents to the client and the stakeholders for verification if they are satisfied with the planned scenario. The task of defining requirement is performed by the software requirement specification document, also known as SRS document, which include 
all the data and information related to the product being developed. Moving on, we have the third step, that is designing the software. In this step, the SRS document is used by the developer to use the most optimized architecture for the development of the software. The developed architecture is used using the DDS document, also known as design document specification, which is shared with the analyst and the stakeholders to check multiple attributes of the software. Moving on, after assessing all the possible attributes, the best software design is used for the development. Depending upon the requirements, different designs are used to develop the software. The first one is known as high level design and the other one is known as low level design. Moving on, let's take a look at the fourth step of SDLC, that is developing software. Using the designing outcome from the previous step, the developers begin the coding implementation, which is in accordance with the architecture design by the developers. Programming tools such as interpreters, compilers and debuggers are used to design the best and the most organized software design. It is developed using multiple languages, for example Python, Kotlin, Java, C. Now let's move on to the next stage that is software testing. In this stage, the developed software is tested with multiple test cases and different scenarios to ensure proper execution of all the functions included in the software. With respect to the testing of a software in SDLC, each phase has multiple case scenarios to assess it. Through all the test cases done, the bugs, errors or the flaws of the software product are fixed that are to meet the requirement of the client as well as the SRS document. Now let's move on to the last heading in phases of SDLC, that is deployment and maintenance of software. After the completion of testing phase, the last step is to deploy the completed product in the market, which is to be used by the users and check for any issues that may arise using that. With regard to the maintenance of the software, there are generally three formats to be used. The first one known as upgrade, that is upgrading the application to the latest system version. Then we have bug fixing, that is removing errors or any bugs that may arise during the execution of the software. As for the last, we have enhancement, that means installation of new features for the existing product. With this, we are completed with the multiple steps involved in the SDLC processing. Now let's move on to the next heading that is models used in SDLC. The SDLC models are applied because they provide a pre-designed model for the developer to use. Let's take a look at multiple models that SDLC applies. The first one is waterfall model, incremental model, iterative model, spiral model, V model, and the last agile model. These are some of the most generally used models in SDLC. But the thing is, why do we apply these models in SDLC? Because they provide a base for planning software projects for multiple attributes. It also provides a pre-applied framework for the new software project. As well, it decreases the chances of bugs and errors occurring in the software. With this, we are completed with all the headings in the session for SDLC lifecycle. If you have any questions regarding the topic, you can ask them in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.